Hi, today I'm going to talk about what parametric studies are in M calibration and how you can use them to better understand what the different material models that are available do and what the parameters, which parameters are important basically. So I have an M calibration window here and uh, I have some experimental data. It's just one single load case here. And, and then I have the, the polyumod Bergstrom Boyce model. And there are a number of different parameters in this model, obviously. And if I click Run once, we'll see that the predictions in blue match the data relatively well. But I, it may not be clear what do these different parameters do. Like, what's the S parameter? What does that do? So it's 1.99. What if I make it, uh, I'm going to let this, allow it to be bigger. If I make it 5, and I can run it again, and I look at the screen carefully, like, OK, what well, changed? It's so hard to see what difference that made. There's some ways to deal with this and better understand what changes in these parameters do uh, for all the different material models. And the way to do that is to use a parametric study. So in M calibration, you just go to the menu bar, you click parametric study, and then you get a, this dialog box popping up. And there are a number of values here in the graph to the right. If you look carefully, uh, there is low, a column low, medium, and high values. The medium values are actually the same as the values in the main window. Uh, so what I typically do is just click evaluate once you're in here and then M calibration will just calculate a lot of things and it changes the colors here while it's, it's doing it. So after it's done, you'll see that in the field to the right, it's now plotting mu, the influence of the parameter mu on this response. So mu was initially 0 0.35 and here in the dialog box, that's the medium value. Then it also compared the medium response with a lower value and a higher value. And the difference between the low and the medium is 10%, because that's what's specified here. And the high value was 10% higher than the medium value. So we'll see that the mu parameter has a very large influence on the response. It doesn't really change the initial slope of the response very much, but it does change the slope towards larger strains. So this is a very important parameter, obviously, for this specific material model. So this is how you can explore different material parameters, how they influence the response. You can look at other ones here, lambda L, doesn't seem to do anything in this case. And that's not surprising because lambda L actually has to do with the large strain response of the material. And we don't really go to very large strains. And also the lambda L values are very large. So 7.5, 8, and 9 are very large numbers. So if we made this, say, 2, I can make this a value of 2. I make this 5, and I make this 8, say, and I evaluate this again, it will compare these numbers now, and we'll see that at larger strains, if at lambda L is uh, small, then the material becomes stiffer. So I could explore that by plotting it this way. I can now go through all of the other parameters. And the S parameter that I started with, we'll see the S parameter has to do with the unloading slope. Uh, of the material model, and actually also the initial slope, although it doesn't really show up very much here. So that's how that, that works. It's a really a useful tool for any of the material models that are available. I encourage you to use this to better understand what the parameters do in any of the material models that are supported by M calibration. If you have any questions, ask them below.